Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris back again with the Ancient Scholars. You see I'm back in school and I have a little bit more of equipment I want to go over. So now we're going to actually uh, transition into talking about the um, pulmonary artery uh, catheter. Um, sometimes they know it as a PAC. Uh, sometimes we call this the uh, balloon tip flow directed pulmonary artery catheter or uh, sometimes you'll um, hear it named after its creators, uh, Dr. Swan and Dr. Gans, I believe the Swan-Gans catheter. Uh, all of those are, are names for this same kind of device. So here I actually have an example of a pulmonary artery catheter. And the way that we insert the pulmonary artery catheter is very similar to some of the devices that we've already talked about, such as the arterial line or the central venous catheter. Um, it's it's inserted very in a very similar way to the central venous catheter because this will go into a vein initially, uh, so they will use a modified Selinger technique, and that's just using a needle and then uh, threading a catheter over a needle. Uh, a lot of times, what I find is they'll go into the the subclavian area. Sometimes they'll go into the femoral area. Um, they'll go into the femoral area. This is the distal end of the catheter. Uh, we won't actually see this uh, when we're um, working with a patient and uh, when we're interfacing with the equipment. Uh, what we'll see is the distal end of the catheter here um, with all these little lines and we'll talk about some of what these lines are because we uh, may end up interfacing with uh, some of these lines in the uh, process of taking care of the patient. So this is inserted and uh, it's just like the the central line. Um, here I have a cutaway of a heart if you guys can see this and, and what I have here is I have um, the right atrium here, if everyone can see that okay. Um, I have the right atrium and down here would be the right ventricle and then the left atrium and left ventricle. Now the way that this goes, this is inserted into a vein so it'll actually, um, right here is the superior vena cava, it'll actually tr go into the heart through the superior vena cava um, and just like a uh, central line that, that would actually sit here um, right above the right atrium, we'll actually go into the right atrium with a pulmonary artery catheter, we'll go through the tricuspid valve, into the right ventricle, and then from there, you can't, actually can't see it because this is a cutaway of the heart, but from the right ventricle, blood is pumped out of the pulmonary arteries, and um, we'll float, what they'll do is they'll inflate the little distal balloon here, and it'll float up, and they'll float it in to the pulmonary artery. So properly positioned, um, this catheter will sit in the pulmonary artery, but we have to go through the uh, vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, and then into the pulmonary artery. So we, we have to go through the right side of the heart to get this catheter where it needs to be. So let's just talk about uh, some of the external characteristics of the catheter uh, before we actually get into talking about well, what we're monitoring, what we're looking at. And um, it'll actually probably be a couple videos before I get there because there's a very uh, specific sequence of waveforms that we're going to need to appreciate as this catheter is being inserted. And um, it's very important we recognize what these waveforms mean um, because this can literally be uh, life and death. Literally be life and death if we don't recognize a problem, we recognize that problem early. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about that, you know, simply because that's this is life and death. That, that, that really is a priority for us um, to uh, identify and manage uh, certain problems. Okay, so you can see there's a distal end here. I have different lines. If you guys can see these lines here, we'll talk about uh, a little later on what, what kind of depth we're talking about. But you have uh, two little lines here, several lines here, a few more here, here, and all the way on down. Um, and I believe these are 10 centimeter um, increments. Every 10 centimeters, approximately, you're going to see a line. And that's just uh, to, to give us an idea of, of how deep we are, because depending on if we go through the subclavian or the femoral, um, in, in, in an average person, um, a certain depth is going to correspond with a, a placement in a general anatomic area within the body. Okay, so we've got that. This goes into the patient. Um, this uh, will actually be outside of the patient, um, and then this generally will be um, either sutured down, um, and there'll be a dressing over this, like a Tegernerb, some type of, cl type of clear dressing. 
Um, so let's just talk about what some of these, these ports are. This is perhaps the most important port um, for us. And you can see a little line there. This is where um, we have a special syringe. I'll, I'll try to pull one up and show it to you guys. As a matter of fact, I have one here. And this is a special syringe, and we need to use this because this is for safety. Um, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a little nub here. And it will only allow me to pull back to 1.5 milliliters. At a maximum, I can only put 1.5 milliliters into this. That is at a maximum. And we'll talk about actually how much we should put in here, because we should only put enough in this distal port to uh, change the waveform to what's called a wedge when we're doing a wedge. No more than that, but if we have to put more, we can only put 1.5 milliliters, so this syringe is a nice, acts as a nice safety. I can't pull back any further. It doesn't allow me to inadvertently um, harm the patient um, by putting more air in or, you know, obviously rupturing um, this or, you know, causing perhaps a pulmonary infarction from a lot of pressure. Um, bad stuff. So it's actually um, wedging and whatnot is actually a lot of risks involved. Now, this syringe connects to this port here, and this is kind of a safety. When you see a straight line, what that means is that you are able to put air into that port. So if you want to be safe, you go ahead and lock that port off, and now you can see that the line is broken, and I can no longer put air into that port. So when you have somebody with a catheter in, you know, for safety, make sure that that line um, does not communicate so you don't inadvertently get air into that. And I would definitely make sure that this syringe stays with the patient um, because, again, you know, we're talking about safety. So, again, this uh, is nothing more than a way of blowing up this little balloon on the distal end of the catheter here. Okay. Now, when we talk about monitoring, most of the monitoring of the pulmonary artery catheter is going to be done here through the distal end. And so when you look at uh, transducing the pulmonary artery catheter, uh, I don't know if you guys can actually see this or not. We'll try here. There's a little hole at the end here, and that's called the PA, the distal hole, uh, the distal lumen of the PA catheter. What you should find is you should probably find a yellowish um, tube that comes off of the catheter proper here. And if you look on the end of it, it'll say PA distal. This is where you want to monitor. Um, all that tubing that we talked about earlier for transducing would hook up to this port here. So it is a PA distal port where we'll transduce and actually do most of our monitoring. Now we have other ports. Um, I have something called a proximal port. And if you see on this catheter here, I'll try to find it, um, we have different ports. So you saw the distal port. We also have a port further up called the proximal port, and we can use that for different things. Injecting medications, um, drawing um, blood, and, and so on and so forth. Um, you also may see something called a thermoster that comes off of this catheter. And uh, this actually hooks into a special monitor here. If you can see that, it actually hooks into a little cable, into a monitor, and you can monitor things like, uh, um, depending on um, exactly what, what electrode we're looking at, you can monitor things like saturation of venous oxygen, cardiac output, so on and so forth. Um, so this is a fairly basic pulmonary artery catheter. I also have another pulmonary artery catheter here that I'm going to show you guys, um, that's a little less basic. It has more stuff. It still has the same components that the other one had, the PA distal, very important, and um, this is where, of course, my syringe goes, and I would inflate that little balloon to, to do a wedge. Um, these really are probably the two most important parts of a pulmonary artery catheter, simply because we're talking about safety. Um, you have a different thermosters here. Again, uh, cardiac output, saturation of venous oxygen monitoring. Um, some of these, this, this guy here, you can see this looks a little different. This is actually a heating element. And um, the way this works is this, you know, this could warm up. And then as there's a transfer of heat, um, the, the monitor 
uh, through these guys here, 